Today, we're breaking down how to create your very own interactive game inside the Horizon Worlds Metaverse. Let's talk about it. For those who may be out of the loop, Horizon Worlds is a social VR metaverse composed of numerous worlds and activities built by the community for the community. As such, you're given access to a variety of world-building tools, allowing you to create simple minigames, complex environments, full-blown interactive adventures, and everything in between. Today, we're going to show you how to build your very own, very basic interactive game inside Horizon Worlds. Let's get started. All right, and here we are. We are inside Horizon Worlds, Meta's Metaverse Experience. That's me. Hello. How are you doing? My uh, mustache appears to be a bit messed up, but doesn't matter. We're going to roll into it right now. So if you actually look at your wrists, your left wrist, or actually your right wrist, or hit the left button on your left controller, you can open your UI interface. Now, there's a bunch of different options here. You can go to home and find a bunch of different options to create, attend, explore. You can check out what your friends are doing. You can head over into worlds to explore what other players have created. But what we care about today is the creating worlds option. Now, in here, you'll find a bunch of different uh, menus. There's my worlds, which are the worlds that you've created, as well as tutorials. These are a couple of great starting points for those brand new to the, uh, to the platform. Our tutorial today is going to be fairly similar to Intro to Creation, but we're going to take it a step further with a few uh, additional world building elements and dive a bit into the scripting side of things to really give our game some, some oomph, you know what I'm saying? Uh, script examples is also a great one. You can hop in and actually learn more about what's possible in Horizon Worlds in regards to scripting. But what we're going to do here is create a brand new world. Now, you can see here that you actually have a few options when you jump into here. You can uh, choose a pre-existing simple environment, which has a few assets, some environmental designs. You can choose a rich environment, which actually has like furniture and some structures and a lot more elements to it. Or you can head into pre-made mechanics, like the launching one, which basically details all the different projectiles like guns and bows and arrows that you can have as well as some of the throwing examples. And what's really cool is that you can actually open these worlds up and tear them apart from the inside to learn more about how they work. Same thing with these worlds below. Scripting environments actually include uh, the framework for certain types of games. This is a escape room puzzle. This is more of a uh, choose your own narrative adventure, sports, PVP, whole bunch of options. For the sake of this tutorial though, we're going to go with something simple. Let's just uh, check out Rocky Island so you can see a bit more about it. And so here you can see that you can rename your world uh, to whatever you'd like. We're going to just uh, relabel this to Rocky. Why not? Hey, yo, Adrian. And create our world. All right, and we are now inside of, of our new virtual world. And you can actually run around immediately, start exploring the environment, see what's what's there. There's a bird right there. That's cute. But to what we care about is the creator mode. So actually, if you look at your right hand here and hold down on your right thumbstick, you will enter creator mode. This allows you to manipulate the world, add, delete, basically everything that we want to do. Now, similar to 3D art programs like Tilt Brush and a few others, you can actually manipulate the world with your grip buttons on your touch controller. So holding both of them down and then rotating them allows you to rotate the world. You can shrink uh, so you can look down at it from like a god perspective, you can make it large, you can experience it whatever you like, you know, standing there in person, a whole bunch of different options that make it easy for you to start creating. Uh, what you'll see here first on my right hand is a majority of your uh, options. On the top of your right thumbstick here is going to be your selection tool. This allows you to select, grab, and move objects uh, at your leisure. And you can also use your other touch controller and by hitting the... Uh, trigger button, you can reshape it, resize it, do a whole bunch of fun stuff. And by actually hitting left on your thumbstick here, you can undo the event. So right is redo, left is undo, redo, undo, redo, undo. And so that basically makes it easier for you to kind of make any uh, corrections to any mistakes that you have. But what we're going to do here is build a simple platforming game. The objective here will get our player from point A to point B, at which point they will grab a special prize, a special object. We'll keep it nice and simple, but uh, it's a great way to learn more about the tools. So over here, you'll see our respawn point. This exists in our world already, and this is basically where the player is going to start when they enter the world. So by using our selection tool, we can actually pick this up, and I'm going to bring our respawn point right here and by actually hitting down on the left thumbstick you can actually snap to the world this uh, applies your object to a grid point for more precise um, 
the placement. You can always turn that off by hitting down again. And so we're just going to place our guy right here. Perfect. And so that is where they're going to spawn from. So that is point A. And we want our character to get to point B. So what we're going to do here is make sure our selection or grab tool is open. And then hit the left button on our left controller and this opens up another UI. Now with this selection tool open you'll get a variety of different options. Shapes are basically simple objects that you can combine together to create other items. Gizmos are more complicated interactive elements. Here you'll find scripting options, spawn point, various other environmental conditions. There's sounds where you can choose different sound effects, background noises, different music, and the relatively new asset library. Here you'll find at the time of this video about a hundred different pre-made assets to explore, some of which have been made by the community, others have been made by Meta themselves. There's structures, furniture, lighting, a whole bunch of other great stuff. But what we care about right now is a simple platform for our player to reach. So we're going to create a cube here, and just grab that, and we're going to bring it over right about here. We'll keep it nice and simple. And so we're going to grab that, snap it to the world so it's a little bit more specific. Boom, right there on the ground. And we're going to use our tools here to reshape this platform. So, okay, we made a nice big size here. It's a little tall, we're gonna bring it down a smidge. Boom, and so we have point B. This is where our character is going to try and reach. So, what we need to do now is build a little uh, parkour ledge system so that our character can actually reach this point. Now we can again open up our shapes menu here to access all these great objects. And from here, I'm just going to build a series of platforms that hopefully fit the aesthetic of our environment. Here we go. And what's a cool feature here also is the duplicate tool. So by actually selecting this tool and then touching an object, you can create an exact replica that you can then replant throughout the world. So I'm gonna create this here, just a cool little rock formation and keep going. All right, and as you can see here, we have a nice little parkour system, very simple, very basic, but perfect for our needs. And what you can actually do now is hit up on the left thumbstick, and then by aiming on the ground here, you can actually hop back into the world and test this in real time to make sure that our ledges can actually be reached. So hop, 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 hop. Oh no, I can't reach that one. No problem, because I'm gonna go back into the world creator tool, and I'm going to simply move this guy a little bit closer so it's a bit more realistic, and now, no problemo. We have a path from point A to point B. Fantastic. But what we also need is an objective, a goal, a treasure for the, the player to receive. So what we'll do is here, we'll duplicate this block, bring him up a smidge right there, resize him so that we have a nice little kind of pedestal thing here for our object. Whoopsies. Whoopsie, whoopsies. There we go. Oop, not again. As you can see, the game is very specific in what you grab. And what we'll do here is open up our menu again, and we'll go to assets and check out some of our pre-built things. And, uh, who doesn't love food as a prize? We're going to choose from, you know, we'll do a, a nice sliced pizza. Ooh. So we'll bring this into our in-game world here. And we're going, all right. All right, like so. Boom, and now we have a pizza prize, a, a delicious pizza prize for our player to try and reach. A little tall, I'm gonna shrink that a bit. Wonderful. So while we now have a great little simple parkour system, and we have a, uh, an objective, which is to reach the pizza, what we're missing at the moment is a, a bit of a, I guess you could call it consequences. Right now, there's no way for the player to quote unquote die. If they uh, run off the map or they don't reach the ledge, they simply fall to the ground. That's no fun. We want to make it so there's an actual consequence. So what we're going to do here is actually open up our tools again, and we're going to head to our gizmos tab, where we're going to pull out what I consider two of the most important, or definitely important, um, elements here in the gizmos tab, which is the script and trigger. So basically what we want to do here is tell the game that whenever the player lands in this trigger, that they're going to respawn back at their original point. That is the objective with this. So what we're going to do here is reshape our script so that it covers our play space, like so. Oops, there we go. And we just simply reshape that so that it covers the area where the player is actually playing. Boom, easy enough. And what we'll do here now is head into our script. So by actually 
Hitting the up button on your right thumbstick while touching an object, you'll open up its properties. And for scripting, we have this cool scripting window. And so this is where a majority of the interaction happens in Horizon Worlds. So what we're going to do here is basically set up this trigger so that when the player lands in it, they respawn at this respawn point. So what we'll head to here is in control. We're going to go down and we're going to find a particular event. Here it is, player. When trigger is entered by the player, and we're going to place that in the menu. Now again, when the world is started, it isn't necessary for every interaction you do, this one included, but you can include that for certain objects. We'll get rid of it for now. So now, when the trigger is entered by the player, we need to add motion. So we're going to scroll down here to player motion and find respawn player. And we're going to place that underneath that event so that this event this event applies to this motion. And we're going to drag our player element here into respawn mode so that the game knows we're talking about us. When trigger is entered by player, which is us, player, which is us, will respawn at blank. Now we need to tell the game to respawn us at our respawn point. So what I'm going to do here is open up uh, the properties for our trigger here. And again, you can do this very easily. You can relabel everything so that we can have different elements. And I'm going to go down to attachable script and I'm going to find the script we just created, script one. And so now this script is applied to the trigger. When the game is referring to the trigger, we are talking about this guy right here. And basically what we need to do now is tell the game that when we're talking about self, we're actually talking about the respawn point. So I'm going to go into variables here. We're going to create a new variable and we can name this, you know, uh, spawn very original. And I'm going to change the type to an object because again, that's what the respawn point is. It is an object. And now we're going to drag that variable over to our code. So when trigger is entered by player, which is us, respawn the player to the spawn point. The last thing we need to do is label it so that when we talk about spawn point, the game knows we're talking about this spawn point in particular. So I'm going to drag that menu. Oh, this is cumbersome. There we go. There we go, nice little coding window here. Boom, okay. And so all we have to do basically is find our spawn point object right here, grab that, and drag it over to our attached script. So now the game knows that when we're talking about a spawn point, we're talking about that spawn point. So if we actually hop back into our game now, we should be able to test this out. So whoo, first jump completed successfully. Second jump completed. Third one, I missed it. And we respawn at our spawn point. So now we actually have some kind of consequence in the game. If you don't make it across the platforms, ah, you respawn back at the spawn point. Super cool, right? So it's a very simple script. Again, very basic, but a great way to kind of dip your toes into the scripting elements of Horizon Worlds. One additional thing we can do is actually attach a script to our object so that whenever we grab it, the player also responds back at the original spawn point. That way they don't have to climb back over the objects again to play the game over again, which is, you know, it's ridiculous. So what we're going to do is open up our menu one more time and grab yet another script. Put that right next to our object there. We will open that up, boom. And then this one does not require when the world is started either. We can delete that, head over to control, and we're going to find a specific interaction. Yes, we're looking for grab events. When object is grabbed by player, that's what we need. So the game knows that when an object is grabbed by player, us, blank is going to happen. So we're going to go back down over to our menu. You know what to do here, respawn player, drag player over there. We're gonna create another object, just like we did before. It's a very similar process, just with a different um, trigger, basically. This is a trigger that when you jump into it, it activates, and instead with this one, when you grab it, it activates. So we're gonna just name this object. Boom. Once again, change that to an object so the game is aware. We're going to drag that over to here. Okay, with that done, we're going to head over back to our pizza, open that up with the properties. And then we are going to attach the script. This is script two, applying to this guy right here. And just like we did before, we're gonna head all the way back over to our spawn point. We're gonna grab that, head back to our pizza, and then just slap that in there. Now, in order to actually grab the object, we need to change a setting in the properties menu. So head over into motion and select interactive. And now you have a few options. You can make the object grabbable by the player, apply real world physics, or both. For the sake of this demo, we're just going to make the object grabbable. So, when we enter back into our world now and I walk up to this pizza and grab it, boom, I respawn back at our spawn point. So not only does falling to the ground cause you to respawn, but so does grabbing the final object. 
Okay, so now anytime I grab this pizza, the character should automatically spawn back at their original spawn point so they can play the game all over again. Let's test out the full thing, shall we? Alright, I am in my, my world, I see the objects to explore, and I'm gonna huh, jump to my first platform, completed. Second platform jump, made it no problem. Third platform, god I'm good. Fourth platform, this is impossible. And I've done it, I've made it to the end, and now to get my prize, delicious pizza. Oh, I've spawned back at the original point, and I can enjoy the magic all over again. How do you like that? Oh no. All right, so our game works, the player can reach the end, all these scripts uh, work perfectly. But our world's looking a little bit bland here. These are all just white in-game elements. Let's add some color, some texture to bring some more life to the experience. So using your right controller and hitting left on the thumbstick, you'll enter paint mode. And then by hitting your menu, you can access a wide variety of options here. So we're going to select a simple color. Uh, we'll go with the in-game world here with a nice gray. We'll select the material and we'll keep it a nice uh, solid, just basic rocks. And uh, over here looks good as far as the texturing goes, nice and chunky. And we'll walk over here with our paint tool selected and by touching the object, you can immediately apply the textures and colors. And there you have it, a very simple, very basic platforming game built inside of Horizon Worlds. Again, I know that this is very bare bones, but this is a great way to get a better understanding of the many world building tools in Horizon Worlds, as well as dip your toe into the scripting side of things, which is its own separate rabbit hole. Uh, moving forward, we love to do more tutorials where we dive deeper into scripting so you can make more complicated in-game worlds and interactions and activities. So just leave a comment below if that sounds good to you.